Today, Career Services brings you business dining etiquette. Have you ever been concerned that your personal manners or professional etiquette may not be as good as it can be? Many people wonder what they're supposed to do in situations they're not familiar with, so it's always a good idea to be prepared before you find yourself making an etiquette mistake. Learn what to do in practice to make sure you master these skills so you'll be confident in public. Here are some handy tips that can help you in many aspects of your life. Pre-dinner etiquette before the meal. It's always good to eat a little something ahead of time. You may be going to an awesome restaurant with delicious food, but that doesn't mean you should show up super hungry. If you do, you risk focusing more on your food than on the conversation. Have a little snack before you head to dinner, like a protein bar, a piece of fruit, or some cheese and crackers. It's important to dress appropriately. I wish there was a simple answer to the question of what to wear, but it really does depend on the context. As with any work event, the culture of the company or industry hosting the dinner should be your first clue. Is your host from a financial firm? Lean toward the more formal side of business casual. Are you meeting with someone from a tech startup that tends to be a little bit more casual? Stick to business casual, but relax your look a bit. Another clue is the dinner venue. Look up the restaurant's website ahead of time and see what vibe you get. When in doubt, overdressing is always better than underdressing. Also, plan to arrive on time. Plan your travel well in advance so you're sure to arrive on time or even a little bit earlier just to be safe. If you're going to be late, be sure to call your host or the restaurant to let them know. If your host is late, wait at least 15 minutes before checking in on them. Upon arrival at the restaurant, greet everyone with a firm handshake accompanied by good eye contact and introduce yourself to anyone you do not know. Concentrate on remembering people's names, especially the hosts, as you'll need to remember to thank them later. Store yourself under your chair. It's always awkward trying to figure out where to put stuff, such as your bag, sunglasses, cell phone, or briefcase. The number one rule here is to not place anything on the table, no matter how small it is. The proper place for your bags are either under your chair or wedged between your back and the back of the chair. Place your coat on a nearby coat rack over the back of your chair or under your chair with the rest of your belongings. Wait to sit until your host sits first. In many countries, it's polite to remain standing until your host has taken their seat. If there isn't a host, then wait for the most senior or oldest person at the table to sit first. It's important to familiarize yourself with the place settings. For the vast majority of meals, you'll probably just be dealing with a fork, knife, and a spoon. But for the occasional fancy dinner, there's a chance you'll see a few more pieces, and it's best to be prepared. The general rule of thumb is that utensils are generally placed in order of their use. So when in doubt, start from the outside and work your way in. Another handy trick is to think of solids on your left and liquids on your right. Wondering which bread plate is yours, it'll be the one on your left. Your water, wine, and coffee cups will be on your right. The salad fork will be on the outside of your place fork for the main dish, and it'll be smaller than your place fork. Forks usually go on the left, but if you ever see a small fork on your right, it's an oyster fork. Your water glass will always be on the left-hand side of your wine glass. When ordering your food, in general, it's best to just not order alcohol at a business luncheon. Ordering a club soda with lemon because it indicates to others that you'd likely have an alcohol drink in another context. Iced tea is another good non-alcoholic option. If you do order a drink at dinner, if your host encourages it, then limit yourself to one beer or one glass of wine. Pay attention to how quickly your host is drinking theirs too and drink yours more slowly than they do. Take note of what your host orders. Pay attention to what your host orders to eat and it'll give you an idea of what you should order. If they order an appetizer, you may want to order one as well. If the host isn't the first person to order, you might ask for his or her recommendation. Be ready to place your order. Order simply and don't make a scene. You can ask your server a question or two, but don't ask them to explain everything on the menu or substitute ingredients unless you have a food allergy. Not only is it annoying, but you'll also appear indecisive. Don't order the most expensive item. It's rude to order the most expensive item on the menu. Save the lobster or the decadent red met dishes for another time. Don't order trouble foods. Some foods can be a little difficult to eat. Save yourself the trouble and the embarrassment by just not ordering those foods. Foods that are easy to eat include chicken, fish, or salads. Foods that aren't easy to eat are spaghetti, burgers, lobster, finger foods, anything with a lot of sauce, or anything that can get stuck in your teeth, like spinach, broccoli, or anything with seeds. The do's and don'ts of dining. 
Always be sure to silence your cell phone. This should be a no-brainer. Keep in mind a vibrating phone is as bad as a ringing one. Turn it on silent, put it away, and don't take it out while in the presence of your host. Elbows should not be on the table. Do not apply makeup or comb your hair at the table. As far as utensils go, don't pick up your fork and start eating until your host does so first. Don't start eating until everyone at the table has been served their food unless the host indicates that you can. Hold your utensils correctly. There is a right and a wrong way to hold your utensils, but it depends on the culture of the people you're eating with. Of course, holding your utensils in a fist is always wrong no matter where you are. You should hold your fork in your left hand and your knife in your right, and you use the fork to hold the food while you cut it with the knife in your right hand. Use the fork in your left hand to hold down the food while you cut it with the knife in your right hand. Once you cut a bite-sized piece off, place your knife down on the edge of your plate. Blade should be at the 12 o'clock and handle at 3 o'clock, and transfer your fork from your left hand to your right. Then turn your fork so the tines are facing inward and take a bite. Place your knife on the edge of your plate at the 1 o'clock position, blade turned inward, and your fork tines up at the 4 o'clock position, tilted slightly to the left. As far as the napkin goes, place your napkin in your lap right away. As soon as you sit down, take your napkin off the table, unfold it, and put it on your lap with the open end of the fold facing away from you. Never ever tuck your napkin into the front of your shirt. Speaking of napkin etiquette, if you have to leave the table at any point during your meal, place your napkin on your empty chair instead of on the table in front of you. This tells the server that you plan to return. While you're eating, it's important to eat at a medium pace. In other words, keep the ratio of food eaten equal to the others at the table. If there's a lot more food on your plate than the other person's plate, you might be talking too much. If there's less food on your plate, you're not talking enough. Don't overeat or undereat. Also, don't overindulge or you'll garner attention in a bad way. Never ask to finish anyone else's food. At the same time, don't forgo your meal. That doesn't send a great message either. When you're done, place your utensils in the I'm finished position. Here are some helpful hints to remember. Cut your food one piece at a time. Be sure to cut your meat or meal one piece at a time instead of cutting it into many bite-sized pieces all at once. Likewise, cut your salad into bite-sized pieces so you aren't stuffing giant lettuce leaves into your mouth and splashing your face with dressing. Let's face it, it's happened to the best of us. If the bread comes in one loaf, tear off a piece with your fingers. Never cut a piece off with a knife. When you want to eat your piece of bread, tear off a bite-sized piece with your fingers. You may ask what about the butter? Since it's polite to only get butter from the butter dish once, use your butter knife to slice off a large amount of butter and place it on the side of your bread plate. Tear a piece of bread and butter, each one as you eat it, as opposed to buttering it all up front and then tearing off pieces. If you're the first person to eat bread from the basket, the etiquette is to offer the bread basket to the person on your left and then begin passing the bowl around the table to the right. When you're not using your bread, it's acceptable, even preferred, to place it on the table or tablecloth instead of your plate. Wait for your host to begin eating before you start. When you share a sauce with the table, don't dip your food into it. Instead, spoon some of it onto your plate and dip from there. Don't blow on hot food to cool it down. It is rude to do so. Drink soup from the edge of your spoon. Not slurping isn't the only rule surrounding soup at the dinner table. In many countries, the proper etiquette is to dip the spoon sideways into the soup at the edge of the bowl closest to you, then skim from the front of the bowl to the back. Then bring the spoon to your mouth and drink the soup from the edge of the spoon instead of putting the whole spoon in your mouth. To eat the last bit of soup from the bottom of the bowl, tilt the bowl away from you slightly to scoop it up with your spoon. As far as paying the bill goes, always make the move to pay even if you don't expect to. Although the host who invited you to dinner is obligated to take care of the check, it's still polite to make the move to pay. You know the move where you tentatively reach for your wallet. At this point, the host should intervene and say they've got it covered, at which point you should not argue, nor should you offer to pay the tip. Don't forget to thank the host. At the end of the meal, be sure to thank the host by name. Shake their hand and maintain good eye contact. Later, you might consider thanking the host again by way of an email or a handwritten note.